right, Nick? Let's talk about the Oklahoma Sooners. This is a team that I think has a very bright future. You know, obviously the move over to the SEC is going to be a big one, and you have to prepare to get over there. You got to be ready for some SEC level football. And we kind of just have an overarching story of how good of a job Oklahoma has done this offseason, just adding talent and coaching and players and everything you can imagine to this roster to get them ready to get over to the SEC. Let's get into the article and we can talk about it on the other side. This is from over on The Athletic. It says Brent Venables has won 10 games, signed 27 recruits in December, and had a top 10 class heading into February. The Sooners have started a new era with Jackson Arnold at quarterback and have a lot of their best players coming back. So Oklahoma's use of the portal was more about adding depth and filling key spots with experience. Nine out of 10 additions have started at least 13 games in college. The notable newcomers were Deion Burks, who led Purdue, 47 catches, 629 yards, seven touchdowns last season. Ex-Michigan State right tackle Spencer Brown, 24 career starts. Former Southern Cal and Florida offensive lineman Michael Tarkin, 18 starts. Ex-Miami, Ohio uh, Redger, edge rusher Caden Woolard, nine and a half sacks in 2023. And of the 18 players to leave Norman, only four started three or more games last season. Quarterback Dylan Gabriel guards Caden Green and Savion Bird and safety Key Lawrence. Nick, this all just makes me feel such in a great spot about Oklahoma. First of all, people who they lost weren't necessarily detrimental to the team or they have already found a pretty suitable replacement for them. Two, you can see through the additions of this team, especially through the free agency side of things, they really beefed up their trenches at the offensive line and you know defensive edge rusher positions and got a little bit of star power and a guy like Deion Burks. And then three, they got a lot of depth in signing 27 recruits in December. This was huge for the program as well. I think Coach Brent Venables has a handle on things and is really getting this team ready to get over to the SEC. I'm curious what your thoughts are on all things Oklahoma, but Oklahoma fans, let us know in the comment section below what phase of this getting ready to go to the SEC do you think Brent Venables did the best at? Was it uh, the transfers? Was it the recruiting? Or was it you know the mitigating of losing people to the portal? Let us know in the comment section below. But Nick, what are your thoughts on all of these changes or not changes by Oklahoma? So I want to jump into this. I've, I've got really one overarching theme here, but I want to jump into something important here. You kind of had a Freudian slip there when you referred to free agents moves, right? These transfers being free agents, that's obviously a play on the NFL. But it's important to understand that's how the transfer portal needs to be used. Smart programs use a transfer portal to address short-term immediate needs the way NFL teams use free agency to address short-term immediate needs. Recruiting is the long-term, just like in the NFL, the draft is a long-term. College, a transfer portal is short-term, just like in the NFL, free agency is short-term. And using the transfer portal the way Oklahoma has done shows to me that under Venables, there is a clear and concise and effective strategy, right? They understand that they don't need to just collect as much talent as possible in transfer portal. Let me grab all these four or five stars. Let me try and just collect as much talent as possible. That turns you into Texas A&M under Jimbo Fisher. You throw all these guys in the transfer portal and your team just isn't very good. It's not a good team. You don't have a strategy. The USC Trojans were a great example of this. They had a lot of talent on that team, especially on defense, but it wasn't a great collection of guys to work together towards a clear strategy and USC underperformed this past season, right? You need to go into it with a clear strategy. And that's exactly what the Oklahoma Sooners did. They understood that with Jackson Arnold taking over, Dylan Gabriel leaving was fine. But you have to have a strategy, right? Okay, we lose some offensive linemen in the transfer portal. Let's go out and get a couple guys. Okay, we've got a young quarterback going in. Okay, let's add another veteran receiver from Purdue to the bunch, right? Okay, we're bringing a lot of recruits. We're going to have a young team. Okay, let's fill it out with depth guys in the transfer portal and really focus, though, on keeping our core guys together. We don't want to up upset the apple cart. We've got our strategy. We've got our young team, a lot of guys returning. We signed a good recruiting class. Let's not go in and throw in all these crazy big names in the transfer portal just to create a bunch of chaos and volatility on the roster. Let's support using the transfer portal. Our holes right now on our roster are on the offensive line, check in the transfer portal and depth in some other areas, check in the transfer portal. That's exactly what you need to do to be successful in big time college football. You need to have a strategy in every realm of what you're doing in terms of player development, in terms of recruiting, and in terms of using the transfer portal. You can't just kind of like spray and pray and hope you just collect a lot of talent throw it on the football field and think it works on Saturdays. It doesn't. You have to have a strategy. You have to have a plan. 
That's what Brent Venables has done in Oklahoma. We've talked about it a number of times, and I think that's why they're trending in the right direction. I think they'll surprise a lot of people in the SEC next year. It's SEC is going to be brutally tough, and it, it, it always has been, but even got more so with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas, of course. But I think at least in 2024, and, and I really think beyond that too, because the Sooners have a clear strategy, they'll surprise a lot of people and be very successful in the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, Nick, and when you look at the schedule for the Sooners going forward, I really think they have a great, like, very favorable schedule to get them introduced to the SEC as a, you know, as a conference. You see, first, they got Temple, Houston, Tulane, some out-of-conference games, get this team tuned up, get them ready to go. First test against Tennessee, who I'd say is a mid-tier SEC school right now, kind of get your guys a little bit of a test. Then you have Auburn, again, mid-tier SEC school. Then Texas, nobody knows how Texas is going to fare in the SEC. I imagine probably pretty good, but also big time rivalry for Oklahoma. Get that game underway, then come back out. South Carolina, another tune up finally for the last stretch of your thing. The last stretch of the season, though, for Oklahoma is pretty brutal. You have Old Miss, Maine out of conference game, Missouri, Alabama, LSU. So I think you really get your test going down the end of the season, but that's probably where you want it at. See what you're made of at the very end of the year when all things are rolling. But overall, I think this is a pretty good schedule for Oklahoma. I like they get the easy part of the schedule early to get this team rolling, and then we can see what they're made of down the stretch. And again, I want to focus again on the strategy because you brought up you brought up that brutal stretch the second half of the season for Oklahoma in 2024. You know what you need for those brutal stretches when it comes to your roster? Veteran guys, guys who have played a lot of football games, guys who have been through long seasons. You don't want to rely on true freshmen or young guys starting their first season to carry your team down the stretch of a brutal schedule. And that's exactly what Oklahoma did in the transfer portal. They went out and got guys who have a lot of experience, who've played a lot of big time college football games. That will be huge down the stretch, whether they're depth guys or starters, it doesn't matter. Filling out your roster, certainly where you have roster holes with experienced players, that is big down the stretch in the SEC schedule the second half of the season. I think that will be an advantage for Oklahoma, and it could have been a weakness before they finished out the strong transfer portal season. So again, a lot of credit to Brent Venables and company for doing an outstanding job of roster construction towards a solid strategy this offseason. And I think because of that, the future is bright and warm. 